That's the theory. Prove it, says Matt Riley. His daughters, Amanda, now 17, and Rebecca, 14, are his best weapons. They arrive at the courthouse from Vermont. One after the other, the girls take the stand to defend their father. Is, is this gentleman here your dad? Yes. Okay. And you love him, right? Of course. Very briefly, describe the relationship that your mom and dad have. They love each other. Did they ever fight, argue? They did argue, yes. Did you ever see your dad hit your mom? No. Did you ever see any obvious injuries or bruises to your mom? No, sir. There were obviously tumultuous arguments between she and her husband. They went on for a much longer period of time than I would have imagined anyone would allow themselves to argue for. But the leap of faith from that that the state is making to somehow it demonstrates that Matt Riley murdered his wife to me is non-existent. But for juror Kim Munson, just mm -hmm. the sound of those terrible fights. I am my the despair in Nikki's voice. You don't get off, I swear to God. Get off! Gave her sleepless nights. How hard was it to listen to her audio recording? All I could think about when I would go to sleep is anytime I would close my eyes, that's all I would hear was get off me, get off me, her screaming. There is just one more lingering question in this trial. <sighs> what does Matt that's a real sound. Rumors fly around the courthouse that he wants to take the stand. The judge even asks him. Uh, Mr. Lally, have you had a chance to speak with your attorney about that decision? No, okay. okay. Instead, in closing arguments, defense attorney Tom Clegg throws his client's personality under the bus, but claims the state fell far short of proving he's a killer. He can be an argumentative person. He probably is pretty damn good at pushing people's points. What does that mean? Well, what does that mean? Well, what does that mean? You need to listen to her. Prosecutor Lisa Jones has the last word, making sure the jury leaves the courtroom with Nikki's voice echoing in their ears. Welcome to my world. You killed me a long time ago. Fine. Because that's exactly what you did. It's a Friday afternoon. The jury has two things. And then I don't like that mother. May she blame me. Look at her children. And it's lunch, lunch, and whether Matt Riley will be eating prison food the rest of his life. I'm told by the bailiff that the jury has reached a verdict, so we're going to go ahead and ask the jury to come in. Nearly five years to build the case, three and a half hours to decide it. This is the moment Nikki's family, hand in hand, they can hardly wait. I'm going to ask you at this time if you would stand and read the verdict out loud. As to count one, we the jury find the defendant guilty of Mal's murder. So. <laughs> the jury find the defendant guilty of Mal's murder. As soon as I heard guilty, I probably squeezed her hand so hard I'm surprised it didn't break because I was just so <laughs> like, did he just say guilty? Did he say guilty? Are you sure? Oh my gosh. He's and, out of line too. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lally, is there anything you want to say? I didn't do it. And nobody found the kid. Matt and Nikki's younger daughters, now a strain for family, arrive in court just in time to hear their father sentenced for murdering their mother. Now, I need you to stand up for this sentencing portion. I am going to follow the state's recommendation as to count one and have you sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Amanda and Rebecca still have not given up hope. Walking out of court somehow convinced that daddy will be coming home soon. Filing an appeal, you'll see my daughter. For Alex and Amy, it's the verdict they've been hoping for. Their only burden now is how Nikki will be remembered by her daughters. They've lost anything resembling a genuine memory of who their mother was because it's now been so twisted and warped by four and a half years. Mm -hmm. But Alex says she holds no bad blood and misses the time she spent with her sister. As much hatred that they've harbored, my door's always open because I don't blame them, I blame him. It's his fault. I love them dearly and I will always have open arms to them. That's a bad idea, daughter. They believe helped deliver justice. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to be here. They asked us to help arrange it. So Alex, you know, be with them again when you say that. You too, Amy.